Hi everyone and welcome to West Yellowstone, Montana. We are live at the Grizzly and Wolf Discovery Center sponsored by Microsoft Surface. My name is Kelly Barrett. I'm here with Sarah, a naturalist here at the center. And Sarah is going to be sharing all about the grizzly bears here today. So just to start off, can you tell us a little bit about the bears that we'll be looking at today and how they ended up here at the center? Yeah, I'd love to. Although the first thing I always encourage people to do is to watch those bears. You don't need to watch us because the bears are much more exciting. <laughs> So there are three bears out on the habitat right now. They are Roosevelt, Grant, and Coram. So we have seven grizzly bears that live here at the center all together. All of the bears that live here had to come out of the wild due to some kind of conflict with humans. And none of them can ever go back out into the wild again. So these bears right now are out here with all kinds of different enrichment. So we move the bears in and out all day from their den area, which is indoors, and we bring them out into this habitat in different groups, either one, two, or three at a time. That's just based on their size and their temperament. Grizzly bears by nature are solitary animals, so it's not normal for them to be social. But here at the center, all of the bears are spayed and neutered, and of course they're well fed. So we've taken away most of the reasons they would have to really fight if they were out there in the wild, which would mostly be fighting over mating or protecting cubs or food sources. And so if we can socialize the bears here, we do. Again, these bears are uh, Grant and Roosevelt. That's from left to right. The one on the far right with that cooler is Coram. Grant and Roosevelt are here at the center. Again, they are brothers. They're seven years old and they're from Yellowstone National Park. And when they were first year bear cubs living in Yellowstone, they were orphaned after Park Service euthanized their mother due to public safety concerns. And as orphaned bear cubs, they could not stay in the wild without their mother for protection and direction. Grizzly bear cubs spend two to three years with their mothers, basically learning all the survival skills it takes out there. They're not a purely instinctive animal. They have to be taught lots of things like where to find the berries and when they're ripe, uh, where the uh, fish are, how to build dens and things like that. So Grant and Roosevelt were too young to stay in the wild and they were removed from the wild by Yellowstone Park Services. They arrived here at the center when they were about eight months old and that was in late September, 2011. Again, they're now seven years old. Grant over there on the left weighs about 475 pounds his brother, Roosevelt, is closer to the 600-pound range, which is about an average range for a male uh, grizzly bear in this area. So again, Coram up there, uh, he's from Coram, Montana, and that is more into the Glacier National Park area. And Coram is what we call a food-conditioned bear. So as a wild bear, he had gained repeated access to human food sources. A food conditioned bear is a bear that associates human populated areas with food sources. So they look for food in neighborhoods, in towns, in campgrounds, and this creates a problem. So a food conditioned bear doesn't look for food in the wild and it's usually very comfortable around people and eventually will become a bold and aggressive bear. Uh, Coram was relocated many times uh, by Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks. But again, he kept going back to those easy food sources uh, in campgrounds and neighborhoods, and so eventually had to be removed from the wild. He arrived here early September 2011 at the age of three, and he weighs uh, just over 600 pounds as well. Uh, so these bears are looking for all the enrichment items that we have put out here in the habitat for them. Roosevelt already got a watermelon that we had put out in the pond and Coram has already broken into one of those coolers. So what we do here at the center is a container testing program. Uh, what happens if there's a manufacturer that has some kind of container and wants to see if it's bear resistant, then it will bring it to us for testing. So it might be a cooler or a trash can, a dumpster, even a backpack or a stuff sack. The point is we want to keep bears from getting any kind of food reward from human sources. So what we do is we take the container, like that cooler that Grant is starting to work on, and we put some really yummy stuff inside there. Maybe sardines, kibbles, maybe a bone or a fish, 
we want to make it something they really want and so they'll work really hard to get into that <laughs> container. If the bears here at the center work on the container for 60 minutes and don't get a food reward, then that container is considered to be bear resistant. Again, we want to keep bears from getting any kind of food source from uh, human areas. We've actually won some major awards for contributing to the conservation of wild grizzly bears through our container testing program, which is in partnership with the U.S. Forest Service and the Interagency Grizzly Bear Con uh, Committee, as well as the uh, Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks. So we're really proud of our uh, container testing program. There was one question from the audience about Grant and Roosevelt's mother. Mm -hmm. Can you tell a little bit more about that story? Yeah, so Grant and Roosevelt uh, were first year bear cubs and their mother was actually associated with two human fatalities in the summer of 2011. Um, the first incident was a husband and wife who had been hiking together and through a series of unfortunate events um, several things happened uh, that resulted in the mother grizzly bear Grant and Roosevelt's mother actually going after um, the people who were uh, didn't have bear spray and were also running not to um, you know say anything negative about that because it was an unfortunate event however it's really important if you're hiking in bear country to be aware of those bears, Coram's going up that tree now, to be aware of the bears. If you see a bear when you're hiking, you should turn around and go back to the safety of the trailhead. You should definitely carry bear spray. And uh, it, again, if you do run into a bear in the wild, uh, do not run because that means that bear's gonna chase you. You don't wanna be any kind of threat to that bear. So because Park Service had all of the information from that first incident, um, which resulted in one death. Uh, they didn't take any action against the, the bear with her cubs because they realized, again, through a series of uh, unfortunate events that the mother bear was really just doing her job protecting her cubs. But there was a second incident, and in this case, there was a gentleman who was hiking alone. Again, we discourage people from hiking alone in bear country. Most bear encounters happen when there's only one or two people who are hiking or camping. Once you have three or four people, you make a lot of noise. The bears hear you coming and generally get, will get out of your way. So this gentleman was alone uh, in uh, thick bear country. There were a lot of bears in the area. He was 10 miles into the back country and was encouraged to go out there with the group, but he chose to go alone. Uh, when they found him, he had already been dead for about 24 hours and nobody exactly knows what happened to him. There were several grizzly bears in the area one of them happened to be Grant and Roosevelt's mother. So again, nobody exactly knows what her role was, if any. However, at this point, uh, Park Service made the decision to remove her from the wild and thereby her cubs as well. And some, some folks are kind of asking this distinction between your center and maybe at other typical zoos elsewhere. Can you talk about what makes this place special? Uh, one of the things that I think makes this place special is Again, we do lots of enrichment for these, especially these, uh, all the animals here. We want to keep them not just physically healthy, but also mentally healthy. So that's one of the reasons why we move the bears in and out of the habitat all day long in different groupings if we can. We change that schedule every day so they never really know what's happening. Every time they come out here, we put all kinds of interesting things out here. We bury lots of fruits and vegetables under those rocks and logs. We hang stuff in the trees. We give them coolers to test, which is important for testing the coolers, but also it gives the bears some enrichment. Uh, there are some fish in the pond right now. I don't think they know that yet, but we do lots of things to give them enrichment. Uh, so that's one of the things we're really proud about, proud of here at the center is uh, the way that we uh, care for these animals. Absolutely. So can you talk a little bit about the bears here and what a typical day might look like for them? Yeah, so a typical day for these bears, again, we're gonna move them in and out of this habitat area. Bears in the wild are not active all the time. They're mostly active in the morning and the evenings. They'll actually spend a lot of the day <laughs> in what we call a day bed, <laughs> kind of napping, yeah. He's, he's, uh, I don't know if he's trying really hard to get into it or just playing with that in the water, but regardless, it is fun to watch. So, um, so bears in the wild, again, they spend a lot of their days napping, uh, resting. 
They want to conserve their energy. They don't want to expend a lot of energy. There's our omnivores, and we call them opportunistic omnivores. They're always looking for the easiest food source with the least caloric expansion. So again, they rest a lot in the wild. So here at the center, we mimic a lot of what they would do in the wild. So when they're out here, they are more active. Uh, they can uh, forage for food with blueberry. They can, again, you know, sometimes we put out different scent, things they can roll in and just, uh, they're a scent oriented animal, so that's very exciting for them. Um, and then when they're back in their dens, they have um, toys and food. We give them beds at night. And again, they can rest back there, which mm -hmm. mimics their wild behavior. And I think it's great that you all do educational activities and demonstrations to show people who come by what to do mm -hmm. in the event that they encounter a bear, how to have a proper campsite. We had the demonstration last night uh, on Yellowstone Live about the campsite and how the bears kind of took that down. Do you want to speak to that a little bit about how Absolutely. You Again, uh, the, the, the best way we can keep wild bears out there in the wild is by prohibiting them from getting any food source from a human source ever. Uh, bears are very smart and they are single time learners. That means they can get into a cooler one time and they'll never forget. They can get a bird feeder down one time and they never forget. So the reason we set up those mock campsites is to educate people about uh, camping in bear country. Again, if a bear gets into a campground and gets uh, the food reward that these bears got last mm -hmm. night, um, which they got a pretty good food reward, <laughs> um, then that bear is very likely to continue uh, to going into campgrounds to look for food. And that is, of course, going to create a dangerous situation for the people there and ultimately uh, for that bear. Um, so uh, when we set up those campsites, it's again to educate people to be uh, bear aware, uh, whether they're camping, hiking, any kind of recreation in uh, bear country. And again, that goes for black bears as well as grizzly bears, yeah. Absolutely. And are, are these, can you talk about the birds that are also here yeah, in the habitat? Yeah. So these, <laughs> these are ravens. Uh, ravens are uh, scavengers. Um, and so they're doing the same thing here at the center that they would be in the wild, which is hanging around large predators <coughs> like bears and wolves. Um, ravens mm -hmm. are really smart, um, but they cannot, uh, you know, kill a fish or take mm -hmm. down an elk or something to that effect. Yeah. So they will uh, work uh, symbiotically with both grizzly bears and with gray wolves mm -hmm. um, in order to uh, succeed in their own survival. So they, uh, they know mm -hmm. that they can get food sources, again, from maybe a leftover carcass in the wild. And here at the center, again, the bears don't pick up all the food we put up out there for them. So the ravens help <coughs> us to uh, be the cleanup crew, I call them. Great. And some folks are asking if they are visiting Yellowstone National Park, if they can come by, and is there an admission? Do they need to get tickets? And Absolutely. We would love to have you come by. We are, again, in West Yellowstone, which is the west entrance of Yellowstone National Park. We do have uh, an admission. In the summer months, we're open 8.30 to 8.30. Our hours do change uh, seasonally. Um, the admission is good for two consecutive days. So when you do come to the center, uh, mm -hmm. you can plan for that. It also allows you to come and go as much as you like. So you can look at our schedule, which again changes every day, and come participate in different uh, experiences with the bears, the wolves, uh, the Uinta ground squirrels, and of course the raptors, and uh, all the different educational program programming we have throughout the day. Absolutely. So if you're watching and following along, feel free to chime in with any comments or questions. We'll try to get to them. Um, so can you talk a little bit about how these three are together? Because I know earlier one of the bears was just solo in the habitat mm -hmm. and now there's three together. So they get along well? These do. Uh, yeah, so of course Roosevelt is back by those trees. He's lighter in color than his brother Grant who's in the pond, although I think Roosevelt's going in the pond right now. And uh, they are siblings. Now in the wild they would have split up probably when they were two or three years because again bears are solitary. But here at the center uh, they don't need to go off on their own, and so they are allowed to sort of stay in that sort of cub-like behavior throughout their lives. Coram uh, goes out there with him, with mm -hmm. uh, Grant and Roosevelt. Um, it's kind of an unusual uh, relationship, mm -hmm. if you will. Uh, Coram uh, just gets along very well with both uh, Grant and Roosevelt, and the three of them uh, can sort of interchange with each other. They sometimes all three play together. 
sometimes the brothers play together sometimes corum plays with one or the other so it's kind of a neat relationship that these uh, bears have and are any of the animals within your center um, do they ever reproduce or and how does that work so all of the bears and the wolves here at the center are spayed and neutered uh, so we don't do any breeding here at the center you know grizzly bears uh, they can live a very long life an average wild lifespan for a grizzly bear is about 15 to 20 years but in captivity the median lifespan for a male grizzly bear like these three is 21 for a female grizzly bear the median lifespan in captivity is 26. now we do have a bear here at the center named uh, bear 101 and she's 36 years old so that's exceptional wow. so again a bear can live a very long life and um, we prefer to uh, uh, provide a place for a bear to live that needs a place that that you know again has to come out of the wild absolutely yep and so just continuing to get some questions about some of the enrichment that you have within the habitat mm -hmm. and you know why do we provide the, the coolers and some of the instruction that you provide yeah that. so again bears are very smart and they um, are always uh, looking for food in the wild since they're only up for a portion of the year because of hibernation, then they are very focused on finding food pretty much all of their waking hours. So again, here at the center, we kind of mimic uh, what they would be doing in the wild, the foraging, um, the food sources. We wanna keep them uh, moving around and, and getting that good exercise and uh, not just exercising their bodies, but really exercising their brains. Um, sometimes we put out different scent enrichment Again, both bears and wolves are a very scent-oriented animal. So when they smell something new and different, it's kind of like when we read a book or watch a movie mm -hmm. and we get all this great information. Um, the other day it was really windy and one of the bears was out just sitting with her nose in the mm -hmm. air um, for about 20 minutes and probably getting all kinds of information. Uh, bears can smell up to 18 miles away so you can imagine all of the information that they're getting uh, from all the different sources out there. So we might do scent enrichment, we might do the food enrichment. Again, we put things out there in the pond. We get trout donated from the Anna's fish hatchery. So right now there are some live trout, although the bears haven't caught them yet. Oh, I think wow. Grant is out there swimming <laughs> underwater. <laughs> uh, we call it submarining, uh, looking for fish. So he might, might catch one. Um, and again, the, the uh, container testing is actually uh, for the manufacturers. However, uh, that container testing is also more enrichment for the bears. So lots of different things. Again, we hang uh, a bird, you know, mock bird feeders up in the trees to teach people, please don't hang bird feeders if you live in bear country. Um, and also to show that grizzly bears can indeed climb trees. Um, and then of course, burying the food makes them use their noses, which means they use their brains. Uh, so they have to find it and forage, just like they would in the wild. Right. Well, this has been wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing Thank all you. this information and providing this habitat where the grizzly bears can thrive. Uh, and as we close up, just uh, another mention for the, our sponsorship with, uh, with Microsoft Surface. So um, big shout out to them and make sure to tune in for Yellowstone Live tonight. So. Yeah. Thanks so much. Thanks, for everyone. Coming.